Thomas, Blood About TV. We're here in Birmingham with Sam Savage Eggington. Sam, how you doing, bro? I'm all right, mate, yeah. Good, good. good. So, before we talk boxing, let's talk tattoos. Yeah. So, I've noticed you've got a lot of ink, more than the average boxer. I've got a few tattoos myself. Have you got any interesting stories around the ink? Nah, mate, like I say, I, start, I started with the kids' names, um, and it's just picked up from there. I've got a sponsor um, who owns a tattoo shop. So every time I get a free hour or so, I'll go in and I'll pick something to get to get done, and you know it's done within the hour. So, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. I just I just go in and and get what I like really. So when you say sponsor, you actually just get free tattoos. Um, pretty much, yeah, and, uh, 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 with all the stuff. But yeah, yeah. And six, you got any plans to get any more or? Yeah, mate, I'm going all out. Yeah. All out. Until <laughs> so there's nothing left. I don't know what genre of music you're into, but I know a lot of. A lot of these rappers that have the name Lil This, Lil That, yeah. got tattoos on the faces. Would you ever tattoo your face? Nah, to be fair, I never thought I'd tattoo my neck if I'm honest. <laughs> but, you know, it come about and, um, but nah, I'd, I'd never go past where it is now. Yeah. Anyway. I, I'm always, I've got a passion for the, the creative side of tattoos, but I would never get my neck done because of the pain. Was it painful? Do you know what? I had the outline done, you know, like the, yeah, the lines. Yeah. I had that done and it was horrendous, man. So I went back. I had like the numbing cream in it. Yeah, I always yeah. get slagged for it now, but I had numbing cream and it was sweet, so. So what is it, is it an eagle or? It's like a, it's like a horror bird, I suppose. It's like, it's like a skull of a bird in it. There's, yeah. no, there's no real eyeballs, or, I don't know. It's just, I just saw it and I liked it. And yeah, I went yeah, in yeah. And I got it, I got it. Oh, so you didn't, you didn't sort of create the design yourself? Nah, something? nah, nah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Nah. That's sick, man, keep, keep representing, keep getting them. So um, let's talk boxing. So you've been a pro for six years. Yeah. Um, you're 21 and four. So what got you into boxing? When, what age did you start? Uh, my bro, obviously my old, I've got two older brothers. The, the, my older brother started, um, and then the one below him started, and obviously naturally, you know, I just started. You know, but when, when we all turn teenagers, obviously you get better things to do. So we all quit. I went back when I was about 16. Um, and it's just gone from there, really. Yeah, yeah. I quit. I quit amateur boxing because, um, to be fair, I only done it to separate me from my mates, really, because no one else done it. So I, I trained two, three times a week where no one else would. Um, and I quit amateur boxing because you know I, I weren't on the squad. I weren't going to get on the squad. And I just thought it was it was over. So. So you say squad in GB squad? Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. if you're not if you're not going to get out at a certain point, you know, there's no real point in, in being there, is there? Um, I mean, I was never looking to go on it anyway, but it just, you know, I just, I just quit. I just thought, you know, there's no point in doing it anymore. I had my son. Um, I got a job. Um, so I just thought, you know, pack it all in. Yeah, yeah. Was something, was boxing something you kind of fell into or was it like something? Yeah, pretty you much. Like I said, I had my son, I had my son when I was young. I had my son when I was 17. So um, I had a job and I got made redundant. And Craig Cunningham, we went to the same amateur club. Um, he was doing, obviously turning pro, doing it properly and blah, so on. So I just um, tried to, I just went with him really. I done, I done what I could. And I said, I spoke to John Pegg and he said, I'll, I'll go to his gym. Got made redundant and it just went from there. Go back to the early stages of when you started your career. I remember reading um, that your aspirations weren't to become a world champion. You were no. there more to support the other guys that were trying to be world champions. But because you were going so hard in the sparring yeah. sessions, the coaches at the time were like, "Listen, this kid needs to go all the way. He's got too much." Yeah, fight. Um, you know, I, I turned over happy to be a journeyman. I was happy to, you know, earn some money every week, well, when I could, um, and and do it like that. But we had a few early sparring sessions. Um, Max Maxwell, Cello, Terry Crothers there at the time, D Mitchell, um, and there was some heavy sparring. And and John said like. You know, we'll go away for your first one, but you know, I don't think the journeyman thing's gonna happen because, you know, when you when you're boxing, to be a journeyman, you need to know how to, you know, just sit back and sort of go through the paces. Yeah, go through the motions, and you know, but as soon as I get hit, you know, I sort of have that switch where I wanna, you know, I wanna, I wanna win and I wanna do some damage, and you know, I think John saw that quite early. Is that where the name the Savage was birthed? Um, yeah, John come up with it again. <laughs> it, was, it was another one of John's, so. So yeah, John, John popped that one out. So yeah, I presume it did. I mean, it was quite early. John always, John, John said quite early. You know, there's, you know, there's no, there's no chance of being a journeyman. There's too much fire, too much inside that. You know, as soon as I got hit in the mouth, you know, I'd sort of put my hands down. I'd be going all out. We're trying to pull that back now, but you know, it, it was, it was like that. And and John came up with a savage, you know, probably for that reason, yeah.
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's been a great um, response from the fans globally. I mean, yeah. the UK fans um, have got a lot, of, a lot of time for you, and obviously HBO showed a lot of interest last year. Yeah. Um, are you still chasing the plans of fighting in the US? Or um, mate, I would. I, I I'd love to fight in the US, man. Um, I'm waiting for the call. I mean. I'm doing everything I can to get over there. I mean, um, any, anyone that rings to fight, I, I'm not. I mean, it's not. I've never turned down a fight. You know, maybe between Matchroom and John Pegg, they've they've spoken and things ain't gone right. But I've never turned down a fight personally. I would have took any fight they've offered. I, the Garcia fight was offered. They've spoken about it quite often. I remember that. Yeah. Um, I'd have took that in a heartbeat. Um, but yeah, I mean, like I say, I'd, I'd love to go over there and fight. At like middle, I think I've been a lot more comfortable. Um, white weight was just, you know, I can't stress enough, you know, how bad white weight was, and you know, I'll never do that again. And travelling to the US and doing it would have probably made it even worse. So yeah, so yeah, I'm, I'm much more comfortable now, and I, I'd love to fight in the US.